So with four rounds to go in the Premiership, now is a good time to predict those playoffs. I was literally reading a comment today saying, can you do some predictions on the Premiership playoffs? And that's exactly what I was planning to do. I've opened my account on the channel on the Champions Cup last weekend. Now's the turn of the Premiership. We're really looking forward to getting into this. And of course, it's still very open with everybody able to qualify for the playoffs apart from Newcastle because there's 20 points still out there. Of course, we've got bonus points in play as well. So apart from Newcastle, this Premiership is highly competitive, that is for sure. And the standard is pretty good. We saw that from the Champions Cup. Maybe not the best league around, but still a really good one to watch. I think it's really between the one to weights, if you like. Gloucester are probably just a step down and Newcastle a step down from Gloucester, but they're not getting absolutely panned every week. I do think there's a win for Newcastle before the end of the season. But anyway, let's get into what I was going to do. Plug in the results that I think is going to happen in the last four rounds. Of course, it's so hard to predict these things. So I invite you guys to have a go yourselves and predict your semi-finalists. Let me know what they would be down below. And also, I'd love to know your thoughts just on the playoffs in general. They've been around for a while now, so we're used to them. But is it still the best way to do it? For me, I guess I'm a little traditional, as in the best team in the league for me is the one that finishes top of the league. I think mathematically that is the case as well. And I understand why there are playoffs. It's super exciting. You get to make a bit more money. It's great for TV. And the final, of course, gets to be played at Twickenham. And I'm going to be a sucker really enjoying it as well. But it's not the best team, if you like. So I'm going to talk about the four semi-finalists at the end. So in round 15, I'm saying Saracens win at home against Gloucester. I am saying Leicester actually win away against Northampton because I think they're going to rotate a load of players. I'm doing this video before the teams come out, so I may be dead wrong, but I'm saying that there. I'm saying Exeter win at home to Bath. Bath is an interesting case. I'll come to that at the end. I'm saying even with rotation, I'm saying Quinns win away. I'm saying Bristol win at home to Newcastle. Then round 16, I'm saying Bath win versus Saracens at home. That could be a really close one. Leicester versus Bristol. Harlequins win. Exeter win away to Gloucester. And there's the win for Newcastle against Sale at home, but they're not winning another one. Round 17. Round 17, you see there, I'm saying Sale win at home. Newcastle lose at home to Bath. Northampton are back to their best, beating Gloucester. Saracens get an away victory, as do Harlequins. And then in the final round, another away win for Northampton. That would be a big scalp at Bath. Uh, Gloucester get a win at home to finish off with. Harlequins have a good four try plus win against Bristol. Leicester win and Saracens win. So if you plug that all in to the final table, this is what it looked like. Northampton, first place, maintaining it only just by a point, 62 to 61 against Harlequins. They're number one and two. And I think that kind of makes sense in my head because they are the best two teams in England at the moment. Then Saracens with 57, Bath with 54, and they're clear of the rest with Leicester and Exeter coming up behind. So those are the semis I'm saying. First versus fourth, of course. So at home for Northampton, that's going to be amazing against Bath. What a great match. And then the London rivals, Harlequins versus Saracens at the Stoop. Two cracking semi-finals. So let's talk about those four teams in a little bit more detail. And I'd love to know what you think about those teams. First place, Northampton. And I think it's clear to me that they are the best all-round team in the Premiership. All over the park, they know what they're doing. They've got that rock-solid forward base. Then they've got the young Finn Smith pulling the strings with the England scrum half, Alex Mitchell. This season could be an historic double, or it could be a so close yet so far. We saw that clip of Jake White coming into the changing room after the Champions Cup saying he was so impressed with them, especially their attack. And yes, they're not superstars yet, but they could be containing a big chunk of the England team for the future. Manny Yogan at Loosehead looks like he's coming into his own. We know about Curtis Langdon. Is he going to get into that England squad? Surely on form, he must do. Then Alex Coles in the second row still looks really good. Mitchell and Finn Smith could be the England halfback pairing of the future. Then Freeman was playing at 13 in the Champions Cup. He could be on the wing. And some brilliant back three as well. And Ollie Slightholm, who's in the form of his life. And George Hendy, who's really coming into it. So these guys could be England stars of the future for now. They're still kind of developing, but that's so exciting about Northampton. They're going to have a good team going forward, no matter what happens this season. Then Harlequins, of course, are pure entertainment and audacity. Those Harlequins fans must have adrenaline going all the time. 
They do have a bit of ballast up front with the likes of Marler if they want to start him. In the second row, they've got some solid journeymen, and I mean that in a good way. Launchbury, Levis, Herbst, but they could do with their star um, second row back, second row slash back row, Dino Lamb, the Italian international now. He could be a big guy if he can get back. And the back row, what a great mix. The ball carrying of Cunningham South, Will Evans over the ball, and Alex Dombrandt, the outside centre in a number eight's body, just loves hitting those lines and those offloads. It's super exciting. And then in the backs, of course, you've got loads of options with Marcus Smith, of course, at 10. They've got probably too many outside centres with Beard, Northmore, and Will Joseph if he gets fit quality players maybe one of those will go at the end who knows so if they get it going we know that harlequins are amazing with esther hazen rounding out this side with his power plus he's a good playmaker as well i think he's off at the end of the season so maybe this is a big chance for them because without andre esther hazen you almost can't replace him to be honest i don't think with an english player that they've got coming through so harlequins now is a great time to get the win for bath well the mix looks about right if they can get their full strength side out. And that's a big if, because they keep suffering big injuries to their squad throughout the years. They've had good teams that haven't quite come up with it. I mean, when Talupe Falatau was there, he kept getting injured. Ted Hill keeps getting injured, and he's injured again. Finn Russell looks like he's got a nasty one, a nasty groin injury. Redpath, a nasty ankle injury. So could injury knock their chances again. But if they get it right, they can beat anybody. But I've just got a feeling there's going to be too many injuries to go all the way. Then with Saracens, it's super interesting because it's kind of an era-ending team here. Of course, Owen Farrell is going to France. Their number two fly half is pretty much Alex Good. He has got a year left on his contract, but he's 35, so surely... That's going to be the last year for him. The pretender was Man of Vinopola, but he's leaving as well. So completely a fresh fly halves coming in next year with Louis Johnson and Fergus Burke from New Zealand. Tom Willis is probably going to replace Biddy Vinopola, and both Vinopolas are probably heading off as well. Jamie George is still going strong, but he may lose his starting spot to Theo Dan soon. Atoche is getting on a little bit. Sean Maitland's 35, Elliot Daly's 31. So this is kind of the end of the golden generation for Saracens, and they're going to want to go out on a high. We know when they get it right, they can beat anybody, but also when they're off it, they can get run around. They're not the sprightliest team at the moment compared to, say, Northampton. So the final, what do I predict? Well, I think it looks like a Northampton Harlequins thrill ride final at Twickenham, depending on how it goes in the Champions Cup, of course, that sort of thing. But let me know what you think. What's the running going to be? What are the semi-finals, and who's going to make that final? Love to know all your thoughts on the Premiership running, and I'll catch you next time.